happy to have on the Goldstein on Geld show Tom Becker, who is the founder and principal of Ocean Skies. Ocean Skies provides corporate yacht and aircraft ownership structures. Tom, can you tell us what that's all about? Yeah, thank you. Uh, first, Doug, for, for having me on the show. That, that's uh, very appreciative of that. Um, so we set up uh, structures effectively to, to assist owners, foreign owners, to get a registration of their yacht on the British Register, which um, we believe it is the best register in the world for, for various reasons we can maybe come on to later. Um, in order to have access onto that system, it's very helpful to, to have a British company, which includes Britain with its sort of past heritage, has its uh, dependencies and overseas territories. So it's not just linked to the UK, it's um, many offshore jurisdictions. Uh, and for us, our main market is not really setting up companies uh, for clients. It's really registering boats. But the companies are a byproduct of, of that process because, uh, for example, an uh, Israeli national would not be um, allowed to register on the British Register because they have no, no link to Britain. So therefore, owning the yacht through a British company gives them that right to access that register. Uh, as well as the benefits of having their yacht in a, in a corporate ownership structure, which, you know, there are also benefits to that. Is that normally the standard when people buy yachts? Yeah, certainly. Well, yes and no. Certainly over, over a certain size, uh, it makes the management of the yacht easier because let, let's say a 30 meter, 40 meter boat, you will possibly have a whole management structure attached to that and people who need to make decisions on your behalf about the management of that yacht. So having in a corporate structure, you can empower them on behalf of the company to take certain actions for you. On the smaller yachts, there's always a cost for corporate structure. So, so it's, we see it less on the smaller yachts, but also with the way the world's moved in terms of, of political correctness, we, we've maybe seen a little bit less people wanting to have corporate structures in certain jurisdictions because it, it's viewed in a negative way uh, especially with sort of high profile individuals. So yes, it's a normal way of doing it, but things are always changing. Some people really do like to have a boat in their own name because then it's very transparent. Um, even if they're not doing anything wrong in terms of sort of hiding money, um, the, the inference by having an offshore company can maybe be that you are. Um, but it still remains a norm and it's still, especially for individuals who want to access the British Register, uh, they almost have to have a company. Okay, so for those of us, yeah. for those of us who don't yet have boats or yachts or any, uh, yet, I, I want to understand the, the real basics here. We're talking about first registering the yeah. the yacht. Is that the same type of thing as my car is registered with the I don't, local car registry? It, yeah, exactly, exactly, Doug. It's it's that easy. Um, the only difference between your your car and your yacht is that your car, your Use it in Israel. You might go. You might drive across the border for a holiday, but that's as far as your car's going. Um, if you were to resettle in a different country, you'd re-register that car in that country. Boats move. You you want to have a boat in the Med, but you want to go to holiday in Italy, Croatia, uh, maybe you know Israel for a couple of weeks. So it's got to move around, and therefore that's why international registrations have become quite popular. So the British system, it's a it's a neutral registration so you can use it everywhere nobody's going to ask you any questions about your boat and just to, when when you say that that means that you actually fly a british flag on your boat when you go into dock yeah. somewhere yeah exactly exactly and, and if, that also sorry so so if you do that as opposed to for example if you were to register your yacht with iran and then if you tried to land somewhere with an iranian flag you might be turned away a hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. I Just mean, to there, clarify, I want to know what this means. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, exactly. There's there's league tables of of yachts uh, of flags uh, based on the safety record of those flags. On um, each flag has its own manning requirements. So a uh, port port state, so a harbor. Whenever you go into a harbor, you have to register. Uh, generally, uh, each harbor master will have a list of all the registries. And if you, if you fly an Iran flag. The, the, the manning requirements for Iran are probably appalling. Uh, <laughs> okay, I don't think there are any Iranians listening to the Goldstein on Geld show, so I don't think we well, have to worry. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but no, but, I mean, they probably are appalling, but it's not just Iran. There's lots of poor registries out there in terms of manning requirements. They may not even have any. So there's a good chance they'll, they'll stop your boat because, to check it because they'll think, well, hang on, how well is this boat maintained? How is it cruised? Is it safe to be in our marina? Is it definitely insured? Whereas at least a British system, 
there are good manning rules that are good for owners because they're not too onerous, but make sure the boats are safe and the authorities know that. Um, so it's almost your passport to anywhere because, um, again, flying a Greek flag sometimes can be a bit politically charged or a Cypriot flag in Greece, that's politically charged. So for those individuals, a British flag is nice. Uh, American flag in the Middle East might not be ideal either. Uh, the, the, the British, somehow we've slipped through the system that nobody dislikes us too much. Uh, and again, the example I'll give you a French flag. There's very strict manning for French flags and Swiss flags. So French clients, Swiss clients really like the British flag because they can drive their own boat generally. You don't, um, some shipping registries are very aimed towards commercial shipping. So they make the rules very strict. We are talking with Tom Becker, who is an expert in registering your yachts and your aircrafts. He is uh, the head of a company called Ocean Skies, which deals in, in yacht registration, amongst other things. He's been explaining to us about flying your fl flying a flag under a certain boat and uh, and the the possibility of going from one country to another. Many of us who are not active yacht yachters uh, tend not to uh, tend to have a little bit of a fear about pirates. Is there a a uh, a worry depending which flag you do or how you register the boat or is that just where you actually float uh where you actually float i uh, obviously the, the somalian coast somali coast is a very, very bad area very dangerous area yemen yemen uh but interestingly um the flag which you fly uh you become under the protection of that nation that nation's navy so if you fly a british flag Technically, if you're boarded by pirates, the British Navy must come to your aid. <laughs> uh, it's very interesting because, I mean, a discussion we had with, with Duncan, my, Duncan Swanson, uh, my, my co-director sort of uh, director at Ocean Skies, is should we start selling American flags? Because looking at the British Navy, it's, it's in a pretty poor state right now. <laughs> and, um, you know, may, maybe with all the, the American presence in the Middle East, where, you know, you'd be better protected with uh, an American flag on the back of your boat. Um, but we like the British system. It works well in America. You know, um, it's got its own sort of disadvantages. So, so yeah. let's, let's talk about the U.S. thing for a minute. Let's say that you are a U.S. person yep. and you want to have and you have a, a large yacht and you want to register it and travel around the world. And you, you take the advice from Ocean Skies and register the boat in in uh, under the British flag using a company. Does that create you know, assuming it's all legal, right? But does that create some sort of offshore fund that you now have to register the same way? You know, I'll just give you an aside. My day job is that I'm an investment advisor and I deal mostly with Americans who live outside the United States. In fact, I recently came out with a book called The Expatriate's Guide to Handling Money and Taxes because Americans living outside the U.S. have all sorts of uh, difficult and different requirements. How does it apply with boat registration? Yeah. Yeah, no, you're completely right. Um, Americans generally don't go for your British system. But there's a solution for Americans because, again, as I explained, the British system is a very wide system. It's not just the UK. It's all the overseas territories and the dependency. So Guernsey, for example, where, where we live is a, is a crown dependency, Jersey. But you also have all the, the, the overseas territories. So Cayman, uh, BVI, uh, I'm trying to think of Isla, you know, Isla Man's number crown dependency. So for U.S. owners, they really like to have U.S. companies because, as you said, for the IRS, it's very difficult for U.S. owners to have a, an offshore Guernsey type company. What works great for, for U.S. owners is the fact that the Cayman Islands, which is a British system flag, will allow Delaware companies to access to its flag. So quite often we'll fix up a package of a Delaware company and a Cayman flag. Uh -huh. So it stays within the British flagging system. But for tax reasons, it's on their home soil, and IRS reporting, it's on their home soil. Mm -hmm. So have you found with the uh, – well, there's been a bit of a recovery in the world economy, but uh, certainly we're coming off some rough times. Are people not registering boats like they used to? Uh, yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure there's been a, a downturn. But interestingly, the, the top end, we think, hasn't really been affected very much. The sort of 50-meter-plus market – which, which is an expensive market. You're, you're looking at assets sort of 30, 40 million pounds uh, and above. Um, I mean, we think right now there's probably at least 10, 100 meter builds going on. And that, that's amazing. That, that's wealth, extreme wealth. Um, 
Smaller markets picking up again, and um, again we've seen a lot of investment from the Far East. They um, we've had recently had sort of Thoretti Group last year bought by uh, a Chinese company. This year we've had Sunseeker bought. I mean Thoretti's a, a big outfit, and so is Sunseeker. So we're seeing a lot of demand from the Far East, we're seeing a lot of boats getting shipped out on tankers to the Far East, um, and they generally stay in the Far East. They're, you know the, the lifestyle down there is not cruising. Even though the much. flag might be a British flag. No, Far East, again, we see a lot of guys with uh, Cayman sort of BVI type structures. It's it's what they like down there. But again, yeah, that's a British flagging system. But especially the, the Chinese are, are slightly different in that they don't really travel with their boats very much. Mm-hmm. So if you're going to always stay in China and you're a Chinese resident, China flag. I mean, I don't know what the China flag is, but that would probably make sense. Again, in your case, if you're never going to leave Israel of your boat, you're an Israeli national. Probably Israel's going to work for you. Probably, I don't know what the system is, but it's it's generally for the boats to travel a bit more, or where your boat is in a jurisdiction where you're not. That having a, diff- a neutral flag works well. All right, Tom, we're, we're getting close to the end, but I just Stop. wanted to ask if it, it, we've covered a lot about boats. Does all do the same principles all apply when you're talking about uh, airplanes? Yes and no. Yes and no. Uh, airplanes are, are, are quite more guided by where the aeroplane goes and quite often you, you have the November registration in the US which works well because the whole point of aeroplanes is that they're meant to go very large distances. But yeah, the, the same principle applies. I mean, you will have Israeli registration your planes for Israeli businessmen uh, who move around Israel. But again, that, that may not be ideal for going everywhere for political reasons and same you know, with other, other nations. A neutral flag can be helpful. Mm-hmm. But in that sense, whereas the British system has, has the march on the the, the 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 yachts with its sort of naval history, America kind of has the the slight step advantage on the aircraft, and it's become sort of the 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 aircraft registration of choice. Interesting. But many it, many different cultures, I guess, have a lot of uh, a lot of history in that. Listen, Tom, we are just about out of time. We've been talking with Tom Becker, who is the uh, co-founder and uh, principal of Ocean Skies. Tom, in the last few seconds, just tell us how can people follow your work and learn more about what you're doing. Great. Well, we're on Twitter all the time. We like Twitter a lot. So it's uh, at Ocean Skies LTD. And obviously, we're on the, the internet, www.oceanskies.com. Okay. It's good to work with someone who's up to date and who is a real expert in registering your boats and planes. Tom Becker, thanks so much for your time. No, brilliant. Thank you very much, Doug. You've been listening to the Goldstein on Gelt Show with money maven Doug Goldstein. Doug's weekly radio show is heard around the world, but if you miss it, you can download the podcast at www.goldsteinongelt.com. The Goldstein on Gelt Show gives you up-to-date financial ideas so you can get on the path to financial freedom. If you'd like your questions answered on the air or off, send Doug an email to doug at profile-financial.com. It's your money for your future, so join Doug every week to build your wealth on the Goldstein on Gelt Show.